Is Jordan morning, Love firing? Good morning to you. Is Jordan Love firing on all cylinders right now? Because yesterday's performance to me was as close to the end of the season, yeah. Jordan Love, as we have seen this season from the QB. I, I thought so, and I thought his his health had a lot to do with it. There was a play late in the game where he was like doing the old Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers lead blocking down. It was a I think it was an end around, and, and Jordan, I don't know if he actually blocked anybody, but he was attempting to block somebody downfield. And, you know, I don't think he does that if, uh, you know, if he's not feeling great. And and I think the fact that, you know, his knee's probably as close to 100% um, as, it, as it's been since the injury has allowed him just to play a little bit more free. I, I, I did hear, hear what Chewie said, and I totally agree. I mean, the Cardinals stink. Like, and, yeah, and like, the teams that um, the, they've beaten, none of them. I think what Indy has, is three and three. I think everybody else has only one or two wins. So it's not like they've beaten anybody great, but they, it's it's sort of how it looked that you have to go off of. And I thought it looked pretty good yesterday. Rob, is the Romeo Dobbs uh, drama in the rear view now? I would think so, except for. You know, there's it, it, it's it's. I think it's in the rearview mirror for um, the most important people, and that's Romeo and the team. I do think there's still people on the outside to, to question what led to this. Like, what led to him wanting to skip those two days of practice, and and why he didn't communicate it with the team. And he, and maybe we'll never know. Uh, and maybe that's fine. But I do think that you know he's still going to face questions. Like, let's say this team goes to, to, to the playoffs and, and, and gets on a run, goes to the Super Bowl. I mean, you remember what those Super Bowl media days were like. Stuff oh, gets, yeah. Stuff gets dredged up from earlier in the season, and, you know, he's going to probably end up facing questions about it somewhere along the line again uh, because he, he didn't he'd just say, hey, look, it was because of this that I didn't do this. You know, whether it was because he was unhappy with his role, which he claimed he wasn't whether it was a mental health issue, which at first he said he had th- some things going on mentally, and then later he said it wasn't a mental health issue. So that's the only lingering thing, I think, is is it from the outside and possibly from us. There could still be some questions. Rob Domofsky hanging out with Jen, Gabe, and Chewy this morning. All right, Rob. Chewy has suggested that the Packers trade a fourth-round pick for a kicker from a struggling team. I said this sounds like fantasy football, you know, when you got a buddy whose team is yeah. – dog crap but yours is doing all right but you need just like one extra piece so you start poaching yeah. from your buddy's team it's it's collusion in fantasy football but maybe it's allowed in the nfl well, do the packers need to go out and get a uh consistently good kicker i think the answer is yes i don't know i don't are there any kickers available in a trade for a fourth round pick that any team would be willing to part with i, I mean it's, again, it's, it's sort of it's not like baseball where teams necessarily, you know, dump people at the trade deadline if they're not doing well. But I I agree with the premise. Uh, I I said it after he missed the two kicks. Was that against Minnesota that he missed two of them? Yeah, it was Minnesota. That I thought that would be the end for him, and it wasn't. I still think that this should probably be the end for him, but I don't think it probably will be. Um, but, I mean, this is exactly what they moved on from Andres Carlson for because he couldn't consistently make every kick game in and game out. Now, you're going to miss some kicks here and there. Like, that's just, you know, very rarely does a guy go through the season, you know, with only one or two misses. But um, it just keeps happening week after week. I mean, there were times like like Mason's – the game in Detroit where Mason was terrible. Like, I mean, okay, so he had a bad game. But, like, there were reasons to think that he bounced back and, and certainly – Maybe he didn't, you know, that year, but he did, uh, you know, the next year and for many years after that. But, like, it's just, just it's just consistently inconsistent, and I don't know how long you can live with that. Rob, do you think Musgrave's done for the year? And do you know what he had done? Was that ligament that had to be reattached or something? Do you know what the procedure was? I, I don't, which is, uh, you know, tells me that I don't, which is why I can't tell you if he's out for the year. But the way LaFleur – said it when he was asked is there you know do you think he could be back this year he said well we hope so when he that with LaFleur that's usually code for unlikely no you know like he has yeah. some you know he's if he would have said oh yeah you know 
we, we're optimistic he'll be back. That's different than I hope he'll be back. Uh, Rob, we are talking about the strength of the NFC North right now. Yeah. Uh, we've put, talked about point differential. We obviously have talked about the records. People were asking, could four teams? It's a little early to be talking about four teams yeah. from the NFC North making the postseason. But Chewy asked us to rank the teams in the NFC North, and unfortunately, just by record and what we've seen, I have to go with the Vikings one, then the Lions, then the Packers, then the Bears. Does your ranking right now look different than mine? So, uh, Seth Walder, who is one of the ESPN analytics guys, they, he's he is the one I think that puts together this FPI. And don't ask me how he does it because I don't know, but he has the Lions number one in the entire league uh, in the FPI. And the second team from the NFC North would be the Packers at number five. Then he has the Vikings at number eight overall, and the Bears are down at 13. So I I don't know that I would necessarily be willing to go that far. Um, I guess the easy way is just to to list them off how they're ranked. How the Aiden Hutchinson injury affects the Lions is, is, is I think, going to be very interesting. Um, I think we can – I will agree that the Bears are the, are the, the, the bottom. I just don't know that they're, you know, completely where they need to be yet offensively. The interesting thing in all this, and look, it's the first time through six weeks that all four teams in a division have been have had four wins, and that, that's that's a fact. Now, there's this to consider, though, Jen. Do you know how many division games have been played in the NFC North? We know the one, but and that's it. That's, really, that's, it? that's the wow. only division game played so far now if you look at the nfc south uh tampa i'm sorry atlanta has already played three division games tampa has played two new orleans has played three carolina has played two so like you're going to get that's you know that's why there's a one and four and a two and uh, a two and four and a one and five team in that division because they played more division games. Unless they end up tied, that's just the way it's going to happen. So I, I would highly doubt that um, on in January when it's all over, we're going to have four teams in the NFC North with winning records. I, I mean, I'm very, as we've talked about many times in the show, I'm terrible at math, but I would assume that the probability uh, just based on how many times you have to play each other would almost make it impossible for that to happen. Rob, what's your take on Lucas Van Ness? Is he a tryhard and that's it? I mean, it's, production it's, between him and Rashawn Gary are yeah, I are mean, non-existent. Yeah, it's kind of my my feeling about the whole the group as a whole. I, I just I don't understand what has changed from training camp when we. I mean, Lucas Van Ness was not quite as good as Rashawn Gary, but was probably the second best rusher in training camp and I, I don't know what happened. Like, it's just, it's a great mystery to me. Um, you know, what, why they can't get to the quarterback. Now I understand yesterday, you know, you, they can use the whole, well, we're playing a mobile quarterback. So we're rushing a little bit differently, but I, I would say that from this defense, like the strength of it, we, I thought the strength would be from the front to back. It's the other way around. I mean, yeah. there's no question mm-hmm. that the, the, this defense is, is best from back to front. So, Rob, now looking ahead, Packers take on the Texans. Chewy says it's going to be a great game. Uh, and it, we mentioned the Vikings taking on the Lions. That'll be a great game as well, especially yeah. for division uh, superiority. Are the Packers a legit Super Bowl contender at this point? Chewy says he wants to wait. Obviously, the Texans game will tell us a lot. The 49ers game will tell us a lot. But the way they played yesterday, and we haven't even touched on the defense with you specifically, yeah. but the takeaways continue, and they're yeah. they're doing things that haven't been done in, in forever. Does this feel like a Super Bowl team to you now after the performance, or is it, hey, don't, don't get too high after beating up a bad team? Oh, I think they have everything that they would need in place to be a Super Bowl team, absolutely. And, you know, short of Luke Musgrave, they really are pretty healthy from all their starters. You Mm -hmm. know, I mean, teams, you're going to start to lose guys at some point, just like everybody does. But, um, you know, they're getting guys back right now. I mean, like, they were fully healthy at receiver yesterday. Now, Dontavian Wicks had the, uh, what was it, shoulder injury, I believe, or was his ankle? I can't remember. Um, So, you know, there's always going to be some some things that pop up. But for the most part, they're pretty healthy. The quarterback's getting healthy. Jair got healthier. Christian Watson was back sooner than I think any of us thought he would be. Um, So I I 100% think they have the pieces in place 
um, to be a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's going to take some games against some really good teams. I mean, the Texans are what five and one. Uh, so I mean, it's going to take some some games against teams like that where they win for you to be really impressed. But uh, you know, I think the only thing that I, that matters, and I think we saw this last year, is that you get in and you're playing really good football at the end, and and, and that's how you get on a run. Not not unlike the 2010 Super Bowl team here. And I will say this though about you mentioned the takeaways, Jen. The only thing that really scares me, and um, there's been defenses before, like. You know, they've had here that we're reliant on takeaways. And when you get into the playoffs, your good teams don't turn the ball over. Like, good teams aren't going to hand you the football like Arizona did yesterday. I, I don't know that the Packers forced, really forced, um, you know, that the, the last fumble for sure they didn't force, I think it was. You know, and, and just, you're just, it's a hard way to live if you're giving up yards, you can't get off the field on third down, but you're relying on, on takeaways. And that's the only thing right now that scares me a little bit if you're talking about are they a Super Bowl contender? Because when you get to that time, January and February, you're just not going to get gifts like that. Well, then we Rob, talked, why is Jaden Reed returning? Why is Jaden Reed returning punts? Yeah, he, he should probably shouldn't be right. I mean, he's he's too valuable in this offense um, to mm-hmm. be doing that. And maybe maybe we've seen the end of it. But I guess you could also say. The same thing as do you really want to risk Keyshawn Nixon back there? The only thing is Keyshawn Nixon's best attribute is that he's a returner. I mean, he's actually played better at corner um, than I thought he would, especially moving outside um, like he did the last couple weeks. But uh, I'm I'm with you, Chewy. I I don't think I would put him out there at, at all. He's Rob Domofsky. He joins us each and every Monday here on Jen, Gabe, and Chewy to talk about the green and gold, and it is always more fun on a victory Monday after a 34-13 win over the Arizona Cardinals. Rob, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Have a great one. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. See you next week.